Hi everyone, this is Allie and Hannah from the Carl Bookshop back with another Bookshop Talk. We are so excited that we are finally in 2022. Uh, the time we're recording, January is almost over, so we thought that we would revisit some of our favorite books of 2021, specifically since the ALA Awards just came out, books that we were on our contenders for Caldecott and Newberry that we wanted to give some time to focus on and share about and talk about why they are so wonderful. And so Hannah, what is your first book that you brought that you had on your Caldecott list? And for anyone who doesn't know, the Caldecott is the annual award given for children's illustration to picture books by a resident or an American author of the United States and it has to be published in English. The illustrations have to be distinguished. There are a few more specific criteria, but essentially the pictures tell the story effectively without even looking at the text and they're just unforgettable. So Hannah, what did you bring for your first Caldecott contender? So my first Caldecott contender is going to be on my list forever. The Longest Let's Go Boy, written by Derek Wilder, he, him pronouns, and Katya Chen, she, her. And this is a picture book about a, a very old dog that is you know, getting ready to move on to the next plane of existence. This, I feel like could have been a Caldecott or a Newberry. This is sort of my pick for both. And a lot of our coworkers as well at the Carl were really hoping that this one would have won something. Same, so, I know we've talked about that a few times. Yeah, language is unlike anything I've ever read before, even in a picture book. So just cause I don't wanna give anything away. I'll just read the inside flap. There we go, he says, Fireball is out, warming soft green, beautiful, smooth across bright blue. It's time for one last let's go boy. And I felt this a lot. I think anyone who has ever had a pet is going to feel this a lot, but in such a beautiful and good way. The whole book is written in this language that's English-y. And it's from the dog's perspective. So there's a lot of words that the dog has for things that he doesn't know the actual like word for. And the design of the book just really, so here's the end papers. You see this little dog with and then the back end papers are yeah. this new dog and so I mean I guess that kind of gave it away a little bit the old dog died and the new dog comes into the picture there was a lot of mixed feelings at work about that there's a really beautiful motif of this dog's orange collar that you can that for me it sort of worked as the line through it all that was connecting all of the images. And her Katya Chen's illustrations, the abstraction of them just work so well with the way the story is written. My old bones feel new. I can run jump again. I felt like these two collaborated really, really well. And I think it, I think a, a medal would look real good over here. <laughs> I also, I love that they, I know that some people are like, as you said, not sure about like introducing a new pet, at the end of like a story about grief and loss of a pet. But I really, I feel like it's a combination of two stories because it's really a transition period for the dog where the dog is just moving from one lovely life onto the next lovely life and the dog is like perfectly wonderful and happy and it's kind of just it's not about the loss it's just about the dog's favorite things and the dog led a really good life or like big cat little cat where like the big cat is teaching the little cat how to become a good cat so when big cat leaves little cat knows what to do the language is amazing I know we talked a lot about like picture books that could do Caldecott or Newberry like this year's winner was Watercress which was the Caldecott winner and then the a Newberry honor because um, it just did both so my first one that I that I had on my Caldecott contenders I there are quite a few books in the last couple of years published about the COVID-19 pandemic for kids to help them process it 
like the Sesame Street did a few different books. There are indie books, um, so published books. But my absolute favorite or the one that I felt was truest was Outside Inside by Lei Wen Pham. You may know Lei Wen Pham from A Bear Came Along was her book that won the Caldecott, uh, a Caldecott honor last year. The Princess in Black series, which is wonderful. The Real Friends, Best Friends series that um, just everyone loves. And then Big Sister, Little Sister, which is my favorite of theirs. The illustrations are born digital. And as you may guess from the title, we start um, outside and then go inside. Something strange happened on an unremarkable day just before the season changed. Everyone who was outside went inside. So it's just that, that wonderful page turn where you can, the, I mean, a reader can spend hours with it just doing this and seeing all the differences. And um, on the first page, just like the orange collar, you have something that keeps you, that you can follow throughout the book, that string that would go through every page. So the cat is on every page so that you and the reader, as you read together, can go find him. Oh, that's amazing. And everything goes outside and inside. Of all of the books with beautiful illustrations that I read this year, this is the one that I felt most emotionally connected to, not just because of the theme and because I think of all of the books about the pandemic that I've read for kids this year, I thought this one hit truth to home about what it feels like to live through it, to read to kids who are living through it, and then to share with future generations who did not or who won't remember it from their childhood. I love the way that Lewin blocks out her pages to continue that motif of outside inside mm. so you're seeing different houses from around the world but she has them all on the same page um, because one of the themes of the books is we may be different on the outside but we're all the same on the inside so there's all of these people who are inside but all of these windows that we're getting into their lives are on the same wall to show that we're all going through the same thing and I just felt like her illustrations, just the way she blocked it, does so much to show what people are seeing and feeling. Um, you can always, everything is so clearly mapped out. And if you took away the, the text, you would know exactly what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, and she also specifically used for her scenes. So lots of these scenes of healthcare workers, they're specifically scenes from like viral news stories from the last year mm -hmm. and a half. So I don't know if anyone remembers um, this friendly fellow who held up a sign for healthcare workers who's taking care of his wife. What I always point out to customers too is on this page, more images of families and families finding things to do together to pass the time and to connect and make things. And this is Dan Santat who spent his quarantine making a cardboard ukulele, uh, which is one of the wonderful uh, children's illustrators that got me through quarantine on Instagram. We love um, you, just, <laughs> Yes, we love Dan Santat so much. So I think it's just a book that starts conversations. It's something you can spend hours with, just flipping back and forth that magical page turn. The back matter is really detailed and very personal. And it just hit me in a really certain way. And I wish that it was or I hope that we continue to show it as kind of a, an artifact of this year that you can more of like a tool and a piece of history as well. There were so many books that came out about the pandemic. Another one that I know you really like, what, what's it called? The one by Brian Flocka? Keeping the city going. Keeping the city going. I'm loving the books about the pandemic that keep the human element and that are like preserving very specific human things that we're going through right now because what I love at the end of keeping the city going is in New York during quarantine I think it's at 7 p.m every single night New Yorkers would go onto their balcony and make noise so they could all hear each other and know that we're all indoors but we're all still here and to cheer on the healthcare workers and those people who are keeping the city going as everyone stays indoors that's going to be something that someone say oh I didn't know that or when you're sharing that with the younger generation and they're like oh because I just figured everyone went inside and it was over and it was depressing and everyone was sad and like sure but also you're human beings and things keep moving and you have to find ways to connect so yeah. I think when we look back at this and however many years time COVID-19 uh, picture books are going to be really interesting to look at of what people chose to put into their time capsule almost about this point in history for kids It'd be really cool okay what's your second picture book that My second you picture had book. on your Caldecott list 
Zonia's Rainforest by Juana Martinez Neal. She, her pronouns, and she is a Caldecott honor. She also won a Pura Bell Prix and a Robert Siebert. I felt that this was one of the most powerful books that came out this year. And it took such a turn for me and I loved it. So it starts very simply. We're following this lovely little indigenous child, Zonia, through her home, the Amazon rainforest. You might've heard of it. And it's a very physically interactive book where she's going through the forest and she's greeting all of her animal friends. So it feels a lot like head to toe with like motion prompts and that sort of thing. And I just love all of the textures. The lily pads are so cute. No, oh, I mean, the gate, even the gator's cute. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> Again, the Caldecott being an award that would go to a book that can stand on its, the pictures can stand on its own. She also did the text, but even without the text, I think you get the, you get the image that this is just a very joyful child mm -hmm. with a lot of biodiversity around her. And it, it's fantastic. And she is part of the world and it's part of her. And then she comes upon this and I did not see that coming. And the second you see it, you're like, oh, right. This is out of your chest. And it immediately dawns on you. There's a lot of things that are actively preventing people like Zonia from existing in their world. And so I think that change and then this interaction, you without the words, you know what's happening. And then it's my favorite part to show customers. Boom. Mm. She is ready. That final illustration, first of all, gives me chills. But the fact that she's illustrated with this beautiful, almost battle paint on her face, I think illustrates the immediacy of these issues. You talk about a book that stays with you all year. That's definitely top five. Yeah, I think I actually, when we got this in at the museum, I think I read it through once and then immediately got it. We were very lucky to get some signed first editions. Also, love a good jacket design. Mm -hmm. Boom. And I, I think it's like interesting because we often talk about how the best end papers are, could be fabrics. And yes. these end papers could also definitely be fabrics, but so mm -hmm. could the book cover itself. But yeah, definitely a book for the Instagram account Books Undercover to do because that's a really good reveal. I love that oh, one. Oh man, yes, at Books Undercover. I didn't even look under the cover of my next book and it's, oh my gosh. Okay, so my next picture book that I really, that I had on my Caldecott list because I, I saw it on the shelf and I said, oh, that's pretty. And then I opened it and I just went, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, definitely one of those that just like Sonia's Rainforest when one of the booksellers picks it up and then you can hear that bookseller scream from the stockroom and you're like, oh, a good book came. We're going to go check out what it is. <laughs> um, so this one cool. is A Home Under the Stars by Andy Show Musser. He, him pronouns. This one, I just was so intrigued by the cover, the lion and the kid and the stars. And then I just took off the, again, shout out to Books Undercover. So you get the just an explosion of color and then in the back you get the stars which you know no spoilers um but one of the the main plot is that this young kid toby moves to the city from presumably the country somewhere with not a lot of light pollution toby moves to the city it is not what he wants to do um and you can see uh, one of the things that I love about this book is that Toby has two femme parents. Um, a lot, one of the, I think the top five questions that Hannah and I get as booksellers at the Carl Museum are, show us picture books for kids with LGBTQ parents, but that is not the plot of the story. Um, and we have like a lot of tried and true, but we love when more come out. So it is not part of this main plot of the story, um, but Toby and his two femme parents moved to the city and Toby says, uh, I miss my old home. 
Toby missed climbing trees, taking quiet walks, playing hide and seek in the garden. Most of all, Toby missed seeing the stars before bedtime. He searched the night sky for the North Star, but he couldn't see any stars in the city. So Toby's parents, and we love wonderful present parents in children's lit that aren't magically absent or who don't die. Um, <laughs> here are some wonderful two parents. They say, okay, like maybe we could make our own stars. And that is just not what Toby wants to do. And we have a beautiful Molly Bang, how picture books work when Sophie gets angry, really, really angry moment where you just know Toby is, that is not what I need. I can't fully express what I need, but that is not what I want. And again, this take away the text and this illustration says everything. We have one of the occurring motifs of the dragon. We have the stars. We have the colors telling us exactly what Toby is feeling. So one of those great books to read with kids where you can ask what is going on in this picture? What is Toby feeling and why? And so Toby goes to bed that night. I love this one just as a picture book lover, seeing all the like connections to other of my favorite picture books. So we have like the Mercer Mayor, A Nightmare in My Closet. We have Molly Bang. We have so many beautiful textures. The book is made from gouache paint and colored pencils on watercolor paper. And then the artist assembled the paintings digitally. So it almost looks born digital because it's so perfect and consistent and the textures are so gorgeous but it was made on paper which is wonderful and we love a digital and traditional medium artist we have another book where a cat is moving through every page that you can follow together that string pulling us through the book we have a story of support and friendship and love and i just love that toby finds these friends and then toby finds the strength to be that friend for his friends when they feel afraid and they find what they need to do to have a home in their city and it's just amazing I think I had one of these spreads as my phone background for a really long time just because <laughs> I wanted to look at it every second of every day okay oh, so now we brought our picture books and then there's the Newberry so Hannah why don't you kick us off with Newberry we each brought one my Newberry pick for this year is Kaleidoscope by our constant fave, fantastic Brian Selznick. It's a collection of short stories and illustrations done by Brian as sort of a, a love note to his husband. They were living on opposite coasts during the American quarantine. And so while Brian was by himself he wrote this it's essentially like a story kaleidoscope a kaleidoscope of relationships and feelings and they all center around this this one boy that or these two boys i guess the narrator doesn't have a name so the other one is james and each story takes place in a different space in time and a different universe. Like one will be, there'll be technology in one and then another will seem to exist in some Arthurian feudal universe. And then each story is separated by a full spread kaleidoscopic illustration I think I've talked about this before I usually read I read things really quickly mm -hmm. but this one I actually took the time to sort of slow down and think about the story that I just read and I almost like I was trying to find connections to the shape and patterns in the kaleidoscope image I'll let you know if I find any, I still haven't mm -hmm. yet. So I think this really could have won a Newberry. The, the language was romantic. It was mm -hmm. just beautiful and haunting and fulfilling. It felt like eating <laughs> a box of chocolate. You know what I mean? Like you're just so rich. So yeah. I'm 
out of a favorite trope and then someone hands me like a love story across space and time and I'm like oh give that to me <laughs> delicious okay so I had quite a few books this year that the writing really stayed with me but for the book that I really wanted to take home that delightful sticker was the Ghosts We Keep by Mason Deaver, who if you've been on Book Talk at all this last year or Bookstagram, Mason Deaver wrote I Wish You All the Best. And this is their second book. And their third book, The Feeling of Falling in Love, is coming out this year, which I'm very excited, pre-order. Um, so this is a story, another story about grief and loss that is just I feel like when you say this is a story about grief and loss to our visitors when they're looking for like a good book, especially picture books, um, less so with YA or middle grade, this is YA, but you kind of get the, oh, or I don't want to be sad. But another, like for me personally, and for other, I know we've talked about this with some visitors, like living through such a intense time, books about grief and loss are really helpful. And specifically after I read this book, I really liked it. But I know that I would have loved it if someone handed this to me after I lost like a person, another human being in my life, just because not a ton happens, but it's very dialogue heavy and it's, you really feel it. Like Ethan is the main character. He, they pronouns non-binary is in high school and is takes place a couple months after his older brother, Marcus passes away and he dies in a tragic accident. And so it is Ethan as they uncover some of Marcus's deepest secrets because recently they haven't been as close and is uh, Ethan getting closer to Marcus's best friend, trying to work things out with his current friends who aren't able to be there for them in this specific way that he needs. And those questions, the book asks, um, what does it mean to be selfish? What does it mean to be a good friend? What does it mean to grieve correctly? How do you be there for people in your life correctly or in the, in the best way when someone dies, especially when someone dies way before their time? And there really aren't, spoiler alert, there aren't any right answers, but it's just especially the relationship between Ethan and his parents as they all three of them are processing this so differently really reminded me of times in my life when I've lost people and it just felt so real and I think for somebody who is going through grief or wants non-binary representation or just wants to have a character who they really feel like is in the room with them feeling what they're feeling this is an amazing book and I just wish that I, I finished it and I wanted to read it again just because I felt like I it's not written in prose, but there's so much poetry in it that I just wish I could spend all my time with it. Definitely something for a classroom. There's so many different um, essay prompts that are fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. And I just, as a little sibling too, I was like, oof, that's me. I, I love a good picture book about processing big, big feelings just because I love having kid readers come in the bookshop um, because we're all processing big feelings. And I often think young readers are much more ready and willing and excited to deal with big feelings than older readers are. True. So yeah. Yeah. Each of us brought two from our Caldecott contenders list and our Newberry contenders list. We each have one honorable mention that we will just pop up for three, two, go. Boom. I have On the Day the Horse Got Out by Audrey Helen Weber. This is uh, her debut picture book. Her second picture book, I believe, is coming out this summer, which we're very excited about. Um, if you go to her Instagram, she just posted a sneak peek of it. I just love her artwork because she does watercolors on paper, and it's just this beautiful combination of like flat shapes almost on this different dimension of work but also incredible texture and things that you could just reach out and touch especially her botanicals and I just love how she plays with text a lot making the text into the illustration I think more people should do speaking of all of those things my honorable <laughs> mention is Bright Star by Juji Morales and again making the text into the illustration she has this specific book, the important text is done in her own embroidery, which she then digitized with a couple other elements in the book. And I also loved her botanical illustrations. I thought they were beautiful. There's just I, the reach out and touch them, prick your finger. And this is a really important 
and poignant story. Bright Star is written for migrant children, specifically at the Mexican-American border, but is also for children everywhere, reminding them to love themselves and know that no matter what people are saying about them or to them, that they are alive and they deserve to be there and be alive. So that is my honorable mention for 2021. Awesome. So yeah, those are just a few of our thoughts about books for all ages. And you can find more of these bookshop talks on our YouTube and social media. Let us know what you would have picked for any of the awards. And thanks for joining us for another bookshop talk. Thanks, everyone.